even by the standards of recent corporate layoffs. Today's Fairfax announcement did represent a big one. 1,900 jobs to go and a radical restructure. The Sydney Morning Herald and The Age will no longer be printed in broadsheet form from March next year. Two major printing processes will close. And as I said, 1,900 jobs to go across the company. Now, a paywall will also be erected on the websites. This means that readers, consumers, will have to pay to access online content, something News Limited has already taken the step of and others around the world as well. These changes will alter Australia's media landscape, which is already undergoing big structural shifts at the moment. And Fairfax isn't alone in feeling these pressures of dwindling advertising dollars. News Limited is also due to shortly make major changes as well. But while journalists at Fairfax come to grips with today's news, and particularly those likely to be affected by job cuts, the market seemed to like the news as Gina Reinhart increased her stake in Fairfax to nearly 19%. In a moment, we'll be talking to Communications Minister Stephen Conroy about all of this. But first, to a look at the announcement and the reaction today, Fairfax Chief Greg Highwood made the announcement with a video message sent to his, uh, to his staff, uh, perhaps a, a forerunner of what's to come in the new online age as they do try to shift more eyeballs online. But here was that and some of the reaction. We're also changing the way we deliver our journalism with a significant restructure of our metro editorial teams to ensure great, greater integration across print, digital and mobile platforms and better sharing across geographies. We're deeply concerned about what effect these cuts will have. We want to see how the company can maintain that reputation with, with fewer staff. Well, we certainly feel on the editorial floor like it's a perfect storm because we're seeing around about a quarter of our numbers reduced. We already feel like we're running on the smell of an oily rag. All of the workers were caught by surprise today by the announcement. It's a terrible way for a major company to make uh, an announcement like this. I hope uh, that the whole team around them understand that it is a team, uh, that if you want to save uh, the whole company, you have to look at how it happens. And every, every big business that uh, lives in the, w the media world just knows the changing of it. The paper right now are unwieldy, they're too large and they've been the same shape for about 155 years. They really belong to a time gone by, not to the modern, portable, miniaturised age. We mustn't short sell the importance of news gathering, independent news gathering, news gathering with credibility and integrity that people believe is objective. Any job losses are obviously terrible news, but when it does come to one of Australia's biggest media companies, this does have some broader ramifications for the quality of journalism in our country and the role it plays in keeping politicians, business and the, the rest of us to account. I spoke a little earlier to the Communications Minister, Stephen Conroy. Minister, thanks for your time. Do you think Fairfax has done the right thing today? Well, I think the future of the media and journalism has been significantly impacted by the march of the internet. The internet has already disrupted a whole range of sectors. If you look at what Amazon has done to books, if you look at what eBay and others are doing to retailing, if you look at the book publishing industry, uh, if you look at the uh, changes in the supply chains of many, many companies in different sectors. Uh, the media has been one of the hardest hits and is at the cutting edge. So there's really no option but to go down this path? Well, I don't think you can stop technology's march. If you uh, would have look at this about 15 years ago or so, uh, Kodak had a factory based in Brunswick in Melbourne, where I live. Uh, it wasn't a digital factory. It was before everybody had mm. digital cameras. But could you argue that you shouldn't... Uh, allow it to be restructured because nobody wanted the product anymore. And what you're seeing is that newspaper sales have been hit, their revenue is hit because ads are going to other platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think Fairfax and News Limited are both faced with some difficult choices. We've already seen News Limited uh, have a couple of its publications up on the uh, central coast and further north in towards Queensland go online also. So this is a trend that you can't put your head in the sand. If you were a shareholder of those companies, News or Fairfax, you've got to make some really tough calls. I mean, it's very, very sad day when 1,900 Australians are losing their job, but that's, that's what the internet is doing to many sectors and particularly the media all around the world. Do you think Fairfax made enough tough calls earlier on? There's a general criticism that it, 
didn't embrace uh, and, and shift to online uh, early enough, didn't get it? Well, there's been a lot of media commentary uh, and business commentary that it missed out on a chance to buy Seek, carsales.com, uh, boat sales, all of those dot-coms. It had an opportunity early on and it passed on them. It believed the rivers of gold, as it was always referred to, the classifieds, was just an immutable uh, asset. But unfortunately, the internet uh, doesn't care what uh, past management thought, and it has continued to grow, it's continued to expand our horizons. I mean, McKinsey's just did a report uh, a little while ago that showed for every job loss due to the internet, 2.6 are created. So while some areas are contracting, other areas are growing. If you follow that logic, what future does, uh, print as we know it, these two big companies in particular, what future do they have? Are we going to see newspapers disappear, and can they survive online? Well, look, the challenge of how to monetize online is a real issue and Is there's been lots of that? look there's not not a lot of success stories at the moment i mean we're trialing paywalls at the moment news limited themselves fairfax have just announced but the real problem here is the physical cost of the capital expenditure i mean fairfax have announced they're closing down and selling off their uh, their printing presses in uh, in sydney and in melbourne i mean they're massive investments i remember driving out to tullamarine airport and seeing the construction of the age uh, production facility and now it's going to be gone and what you what you've also got is news limited sometime in the next five to ten years they will have to make a choice about whether they reinvest in new printing presses and you'd have to say sitting back now would you really spend hundreds of millions of dollars in a new printing press or would you start designing the new digital uh, era uh, equipment and, and, and apps and things like that. And so you've got to say the problem with the printing press era is that it's costly compared to the startup online, which is cannibalising the revenue stream and the eyeballs. But if, if the outlook is so grim for the print hard copy and it's so uncertain and really uh, unproven online, is there a real danger here to Australian journalism as we know it? Quality broadsheets disappearing, that will have an enormous impact. Uh, on Australian journalism. Oh, look, I, I couldn't agree with you more. The Convergence Review uh, and the Finkelstein Report looked at some of these issues uh, because the question of uh, quality journalism and quality broadsheets is, is a and really it, fraught it, it, issue. I mean, Fairfax have announced they're shrinking to, uh, to a, a different a size, copy. a smaller copy size. The Finkelstein size. inquiry that you commissioned did suggest uh, the government look at ways, examine ways to provide funding for quality journalism to survive. What do you think about that? Well, they, the Finkelstein Inquiry recommended that we ask the Productivity Commission to look into this. There is a couple of models from around the world that people have talked about. Senator John Kerry recently said, hey, we should be subsidising print. Uh, in France, there's been suggestions of subsidising print. I'm not sure a government that's already putting enormous amounts into two national broadcasters, both the ABC and the SBS, we are, you know, TV, radio and online. I don't think we could justify putting money into a print world. I don't think the government can put its head in the sand and ignore uh, the technology changes that are taking place any more than a shareholder at Fairfax or News Limited could ignore the future either. So, but so I think you're, you're ruling that out. Uh, Look, I don't think there's any way that we can put money into, into print. Is, isn't there an argument that uh, with some of those public broadcasters, the ABC, um, uh, SBS, their online presence is, is also going to hurt Fairfax and News Limited online? Well, I think the, the government is committed to ensuring that every Australian gets access to uh, the content that every Australian can, you know, gives taxpayer dollars towards providing. Uh, and if you were to say that the ABC or the SBS shouldn't be online, you'd probably be cutting off its future. I mean, how many kids now under the age of 30 read newspapers? They're all on their iPads, their smartphones, their uh, laptops, and they're reading uh, all the material that's there. So if you were to say the ABC couldn't be online, you'd actually be committing uh, murder of the ABC and, and the a SBS because sure. they wouldn't be able to get their content to anybody under the age of 30. Yeah, sure, but on, on the other hand, it does make it tougher for those private companies trying to make a buck online, doesn't it? Well, we've always had the balance in Australia between the competing uh, national broadcasters and print and the free-to-air television networks and, and your own network here. So this is not a change. This is an existing situation that is just continuing on a different platform. And just finally, uh, Gina Reinhart, meanwhile, has lifted her stake in Fairfax to nearly 19%. This is someone your colleague, the Treasurer, described as a threat to democracy. Do you, firstly, do you agree with that assessment? Well, I think you've seen from her public statements, you've seen from her spokesperson's public statements, that she's only interested in influencing the editorial content 
of Fairfax. And I think the board has a very strong position on this at Fairfax. It's said consistently it's not negotiable. Uh, you can't come on the board and seek to break the charter of editorial independence. If Ms Reinhardt is prepared to sign up to that, then Ms Reinhardt should be treated like every other shareholder. But if her stated intent is, as her spokesperson said recently, was, oh, no, we should be able to change the editorial position if it's in the business interests of the company, well, then I do think there are genuine concerns. But what this would do was destroy the credibility of the Fairfax mastheads. I mean, they've had this charter for a long time. Their readership respect and admire the Charter and what it represents. And if you were to start turning it into just a pro-mining industry gazette, well, I don't think you would see the rest of the shareholders in Fairfax be too excited about the, the collapse in readership. Well, that, that in the end will be a question for the shareholders as to whether they do want to go down that path or not. And, and at least you have someone investing in the company. Is the government going to introduce a fit and proper person's test for media owners and, fit, and would Gina Reinhardt pass it? Look, uh, I can't see any reason why Gina Hein Reinhardt wouldn't pass a fit and proper person's test. But we actually used to have a fit and proper person mm -hmm. test and Alan Bond passed it once. Uh, so we actually changed the, the definition uh, after that. So what I do think we are, have to be concerned about is a public interest test and concentration and diversity. And that's what I've long advocated. That's what the Convergence Review uh, is advocating. And that's where I think the government needs to have a look at the Convergence reviews recommendations around a fit and proper person's test. Uh, sorry, around a, uh, a public interest test, not a fit and proper person test. Stephen Conroy, thank you. Thank you.